all know that we should keep one hand free for the handrail when coming downstairs. Most companies include this in their basic policies and procedures. It seems like common sense. And yet accidents where people lose control coming downstairs still occur resulting in injury, often serious. In recent times, one colleague broke his leg in three places. Two more dislocated their shoulders. Altogether, these three incidents prevented these guys from living and working normally for almost a year. The purpose of this DVD is to explain briefly through understanding what we actually do as we descend a set of stairs, why we might want to use the trailing hand technique both at work and indeed at home. When we are on the ball of our feet and our toes, we have much more control than when on the heel. If you don't believe us, why not try it? We are so much stronger when the arms are bent rather than straight. As we come down in the normal manner and freeze frame at any given time, we can see that we tend to be on our heels rather than on our toes. The arm is at our side and we're able to grasp the handrail with all four fingers. Taking our time, we are at low risk of losing control. If and when we do slip and stumble, momentum would continue in the direction of travel. We would begin to fall forward and down the stairs. Our emergency braking system, our hand, would instinctively kick in and try and catch our fall. Momentum could gather down four or five steps distance before the hand takes effect and stress is exerted through the hand and the shoulder. At this point, it is actually impossible for all four fingers of my hand to grasp the handrail and my hand is actually being torn away. The probability of injury has to be high. So what is the trailing hand technique? How do we use it and what difference does it make? As we arrive at the stair and begin to descend, ideally we turn 45 degrees and literally trail our hand behind us whilst holding onto the underside of the handrail. As we come down using the trailing hand and freeze frame again, we can see that we're more likely to get the best part of the foot for balance onto the step. In actual fact, both feet can support and balance us most of the time, less chance of losing control already. The arm is now bent and we can still grip the handrail with all four fingers. Even lower risk of losing control in the first place. However, at some point along the way, we may still lose control. As before, momentum would cause us to begin to fall forward and down the stair, and our emergency brake system would instinctively kick in. This time, however, we would only travel possibly one or two steps before that emergency brake takes effect and therefore far less stress is exerted on the shoulder and at the hand. Our grip is greatly improved and is unlikely to be torn away. The probability of injury, therefore, has been greatly reduced. The best way to appreciate what we're saying here is to feel the difference yourself. As an example, I've asked Ross to walk down the stairs in a normal manner and then freeze in a moment of time. If I now gently pull Ross towards that potential injury, we'll see how much effort it takes for him to lose control despite not wanting to go there. Now Ross will come down using the trailing hand technique. And again, freeze in that moment of time. Now let's see where his feet have ended up. That's a lot better. Let's see how much effort it takes for Ross to start losing his balance as before. In actual fact, I can exert a lot of force on Ross and he seems unconcerned. This is the difference between possible serious injury and none, and why we suggest that you might want to use the trailing hand technique all the time.